Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Glee Season 5, Episode 16, Tested. And uh, this episode was also a really good episode. I thought, um, you know, I was looking forward to it because the past two episodes have been really, really good. No, this episode was not as good as the past two episodes. I will say that's not one of my favorite episodes of the season. However, it still was really, really good. Um, I feel like this one was kind of just a fun episode, you know? It wasn't anything huge, because next week we're really getting into something huge, you know, there's gonna be a huge plot point coming up next week, so I feel like this is kind of a, you know, not, I didn't feel like this was a filler episode, I feel like this was just more of a fun, you know, not much, not too much happening, I, I felt like it was more of a fun episode, you know? I really enjoyed it. My only complaint about this episode was we did not get to see any development with Rachel in Funny Girl, you know, especially with focusing on her so much last week and seeing what's happened with her. I was expecting to at least see her go through, like, a rehearsal or something, but we didn't really see a lot of that. She did have something to do in the episode, but it had nothing to do with Funny Girl, and um, I was a little disappointed by that, but let's get to the episode. I think um, the main plot, there were three plots in this episode, and each one of them, you know, I thought each one was pretty interesting. Now, the reason this episode was called Tested, for several reasons. Um, you know, one of the reasons, one of them has to do with an STD. One of them has to do with the testing of a relationship. And the other one has to do with the testing of sex. That's, that's basically what all three of them have to do. Um, let's first talk about the main plot, which I believe was probably, um, Kurt and Blaine. Let's get to them first, because I, I really enjoyed where theirs was. You know, theirs was probably the most fun out of all of them. Um, but it, it, you know, I really enjoyed their plot a lot. So basically, Kurt and Blaine, um, we see right in the beginning that Blaine is, you know, we had a great monologue, really funny monologue. I, I really loved Blaine's monologue in the beginning. He's eating all this food. He's really enjoying New York. You know, he's basically being a typical college freshman. He's, you know, at, you know, you're, he's chowing down on all this food and everything. He's really enjoying his life in New York. And, um, he realizes that he's gotten what's called the Freshman 15. Now, of course, I personally haven't experienced that because I'm not in college yet. I'm only a freshman in high school. Um, but, you know, he's, he's dr ate a lot of junk food. I heard it's like something that a lot of freshmen typically get. It's like a typical thing. And, um, that's what's happened to Blaine. He's gotten this thing called the Freshman 15. So, um, it's gonna be, and, you know, that, that was definitely uh, interesting when that happens. And, uh, basically, af after this happens, he sees that Kurt is actually a lot more, um, getting a lot more sex appeal from guys than Blaine is. And Blaine is kind of getting a little worried about this. He's never really seen Kurt get this much appeal before and this much love and everything. It just seems like people are preferring Kurt over Blaine, and Blaine is not used to this. Probably because everyone's always, you know, been so nice to Blaine, but Blaine's starting to see that when it's between Kurt and Blaine, people favor Kurt over Blaine. I thought that was actually kind of interesting the way they did that. You know, it seems like every episode it's always Blaine's amazing, Blaine's amazing. Finally, we got to see Blaine kind of vulnerable in this episode, and I like seeing that. I really liked his development in this episode. Um, but what ends up happening is, is Kurt and Blaine, you know, they're, they're in this um, sword fighting thing, which is pretty funny. Uh, they do a lot, of, they're doing like a fencing thing in Niata. I'm like, is this Niata or fencing class? I thought that was, uh, you know, kind of funny. Um, but I also thought it was really funny when Blaine's eating the cheese puff and the one guy's like, hey, you're up next, cheese puff. That was really funny. Um, there were some really funny lines between Kurt and, you know, Kurt and Blaine, but they actually end up in this fight. Um, because Kurt, Blaine actually talks to Kurt about this. He, Kurt does not know about the weight gang thing. And, uh, basically... Kurt finds that Blaine is on the site called fratboys.com, and Kurt starts to get the wrong idea. He starts to think that Blaine, you know, it doesn't like Kurt as much or isn't favoring him for some reason, and it, it gets pretty personal between the two of them. I was, I was surprised by how far that went up, actually. I didn't think it would go as far as it did, but it went pretty far. And, um, they're doing this song, Love is a Battlefield, which I, I really like the song in the episode. By the way, there were not too many songs this episode, only four songs in the episode, which um, I, I was fine with, I guess, but I, I like it when they have six songs. You know, it's, it's a little bit more um, fun when there's six songs, but um, it basically, they're, they're uh, doing the fencing thing in Love is a Battlefield. I like the choreography to that. I thought that was probably the best performance of the episode because just the way it was done, I thought it was really, really amazing the way they did that. 
And, uh, you know, uh, Kurt is getting so into it, he accidentally almost hurts Blaine. And, um, Blaine's just like, what the hell, Kurt, basically. And then they go back and they have a fight. And then we kind of get their, uh, reconciliation scene, which I, which I liked. Um, we see Kurt and Blaine basically talking. And Blaine kind of admits to Kurt that he's surprised that Kurt is, you know, more popular than him. He said... You know, back in back when they first met, when he was telling him about the whole Karoski situation, if you that's remember, that's how they met, and Blaine wanted to help him with that. He always he loved helping Kurt, but now it's Kurt helping Blaine, and he's not used to it. And he tells him he's not used to it. And he tells him the reason that they haven't been intimate is because he just hasn't felt good about himself. He hasn't felt like he himself um, deserves it. Basically, he just he doesn't want to live with himself because he's not used to it being. Um, Kurt over Blaine. He's used to it being Blaine over Kurt. Um, you know, he's not used to that happening. And basically, um, you know, the, the, it was very interesting between that happening. And in the end, it turns out that Blaine, in, because of the weight gain, he has to, um, you know, um, eat this whole thing with, eat this whole food and everything. And really, really funny there. So, Kurt and Blaine seems like they're okay. Obviously, we knew they'd be okay. Um, we knew that would happen, but, um, so yeah, we, we knew they'd be okay, but luckily they were okay. Um, we knew they would be okay, and, um, I'm happy they were okay, because I thought they were going to break up over, and if they would have broken up over something like that, it would have been really stupid. But that was the current blame plot, and, uh, I was, I enjoyed that plot overall, I thought it was really good, but my favorite plot of the episode was probably Artie's. I thought Artie's was probably the best episode, plot of the episode. It just was really interesting, the whole thing, the way it went, and I, I actually, no, that wasn't my favorite plot, I'll get to my favorite plot. Um, Artie's plot was basically had to do with, um, him, he, ever since he broke up with Kitty, which we assume he's broken up with Kitty, they didn't even mention that, which I was not happy about, because I really liked Artie and Kitty together, but they didn't mention that. Um, nevertheless, though, I still enjoyed that plot. Um, he is getting all this love from all these girls, having sex with them, where, you know, assuming he's having sex with all of them, he says he's got, like, three different girlfriends, but there's only one that really matters to him, and that girl is Julie. Julie is this girl who I like. I like this girl, Julie. I think she's pretty just... The other two girls are pretty weird. One has red hair, one has blue hair. This girl's just normal. She has dark hair, and she helps him on his film project and everything. And, um, basically, we see that he's, she's the one he's really after. So, I kind of liked her. I, I like where they're going with her. She just seems like a nice girl. Eventually, though, he's told by his doctor that he has chlamydia. And he's really surprised because he has no idea where this came from. And I, myself, was surprised when I heard that was the big story that I didn't want to tell you guys about with Artie. Because it's just too shocking to think that Artie got this STD. I never would have thought that Artie, that of all the people on Glee, Artie would be the one to get it. I always would have thought, like, Sam would be the one to get Because Sam's, you know, as much as we like Sam, he is kind of a player. You know, he goes after this girl, after this girl. In this episode, though, not so much, but we've seen that before. Um, Sam actually had probably the funniest line of the episode, where he said, um, slut shame. That was the funniest part, definitely one of the funniest parts. Um, I, I love that scene, you know, where Sam's just calling, he it already has to tell everyone about it, and... Kerr and Blaine are okay with they. Kerr and Blaine say you need to tell everyone about this. You need to tell everyone you've been with about this. And, um, you know, then Sam says slut shame. I thought that was really funny. Um, definitely a really funny scene. Really well done. So, Artie ends up telling both, um, the first girl about it. The first girl freaks out. I don't remember the name of the first girl, but she freaks out about it. She says, I want nothing to do with you. You're a sick person. I want nothing to do with you. Um, he tells the other girl, and she's actually okay with it. She says, okay, I'll just get, I'll just, um, you know, go to the doctor, go, uh, get the thing. I, I don't remember what she said, but she said she's gonna go get it checked and everything to, so he'll be okay. And, um, he does not tell Julie. Um, Julie at first rejected him. He tried to ask her out on a date, and she said no, because, um, she said, I don't date my people I work with. But then she said yes to him. So now he's stuck with this girl. He's stuck going out with her, but he has not told her about the STD yet. And he's, he's kind of um, upset that he hasn't told her um, and everything. So he takes her out to bread... To, not bread six. That's, that's, um, that's, you know, not bread... He takes her to a spotlight diner. <laughs> Sorry, not bread sticks. I'm used to saying he takes her out to bread sticks. Um, he takes her out to the spotlight diner, which I was... It was cool that we saw that again. I like seeing that. Um, 
and they're on a date and everything. And by the way, he has to wear this thing um, because the doctor told him to. This thing that says I have an STD and everything, but eventually he took it off. Um, but he has to keep wearing it. And um, basically, actually, he it's not something he has to wear. He just he fantasizes that he has this thing on them that says I have an STD. It's pretty funny. I think I think that actually is pretty funny. Um, but, um, basically, the whole time he's ordering, he's, he's picturing people saying warts and STDs and things like that. Really, really funny scene. Um, eventually, though, you know, it does come to the point where he tells her, um, I like you, but let's make a plan not to have sex for the next 5 to 15 days. And she's like, what? You know, she's automatically turned off by that. She's like, okay, you know, we just met it. She's like, um, we just started this relationship like an hour ago. I didn't, wasn't actually thinking about having sex with you. I thought that was pretty funny, um, the way that all worked. And, um, eventually, though, he has to tell her that he has the STD, and she's turned off by him. She says, I, I realize, you know, from hearing the truth that it tells me, you know, it actually says who the person actually is, and, and she says, I was wrong about you, you're a creeper. And so, this girl now wants nothing to do with him, unfortunately. And I'm hoping that we see this girl again, because I like this girl. I think she's a good match for Artie. I'd like to see where this girl goes. She's she's a sweet girl. She's not bad or anything. It seems she's a pretty innocent girl. I just, I hope that they bring her back. I hope that's what they're setting up here, that they're setting up a relationship between her, um, him and this girl, and we're going to see her again, because I like seeing this girl. I like where she's going, and I just, I liked her. I, you know, she seems like a nice girl. Um, so yeah, that was Artie's plot, probably, um, you know, my second favorite plot, a, a good, good plot, um, I overall, kind of silly, but I enjoyed it. My favorite plot of this episode was actually Sam and Mercedes. I really like the way they handled it between the two of them, because it was actually kind of surprising. Sam wants sex, you know, with Mercedes, but Mercedes keeps saying no, she doesn't want it for some reason. She says, you know, we just met, and uh, you know, we just started going out, I don't know if I'm ready yet, so... She takes him over to her church, and um, she's singing the song, I Want to Know What Love Is, which was, uh, I liked it. Also, I like the song that Artie sang, Addicted to Love, and also, um, you know, I liked when he sang that, Addicted to Love, that was good. Um, but um, she's singing, I Want to Know What Love Is, a really great solo from Mercedes. And basically, she asks Rachel um, for advice on the, on the the all about sex, basically. She, want, she wants advice on it. And, um... Rachel tells her that, you know, when her and Finn had sex, that it, it, you really don't think about it. You just, it, it just happens in the moment. And I thought that was good advice from Rachel overall. And when Sam and Mercedes are about to, you know, they're in, they're in the Spotlight Diner. They're on, like, a double date with uh, Artie and Julie. They're both in the same place, basically. And, um... When they're in there, they're talking all about sex and everything, and Mercedes says she doesn't want to, and eventually it comes to the point where we find out that not only is Mercedes a virgin, she doesn't want sex until she's married, and Sam doesn't know how to react to this. Also, we found that Sam had sex. I don't remember who he had sex with, though. Did he have sex with Quinn, Santana, Brittany, uh, Kitty? Who do you, I'm Not Kitty. You know, he wasn't with um, Kitty. He was with them. Um, what did he, you know, Quinn, Santana, Brittany... Uh, who else was he with? I, who I can't remember who else he was with, but he was with a couple other people. Oh, the the nurse. Who who did he have sex with? Like seriously, who did Sam have sex with? I don't remember. I don't know, and I'm interested. In, they didn't say. Um, but basically, she tells him that she's not ready till she's married, and Sam doesn't really know what to say to this. He's kind of like, eh, I'll think about it. And he says, Well, if you don't want to have sex, then it's kind of like we're almost friends. And, uh, you know, Mercedes it doesn't, you know, tells him that that's what she believes and she thinks that that's what's right. And basically, they're talking and everything, and I really like this next scene. I really like the way this was done. Um, Sam goes up to... Mercedes is talking on the phone with Sam, and he has this whole candlelight um, thing for her. And Rachel was talking about this. He said, don't make it cheesy and everything like candles. But he has candles everywhere for her, and he says, just because you don't want to have sex, it doesn't mean we can't be a romantic couple. And he kisses her, and he tells her he's happy, you know, he's he will wait for her. And I thought that was great. And he tells her the one thing that he loves more than sex. He says, the things I love more than sex, horseback riding, skydiving, and hearing you sing. And that scene was just, that was so sweet when he said that. Um, he says he loves hearing her sing. 
and he's willing to wait, and they kiss, and I really like that scene. Now, after that, something really interesting happened. I'm interested in seeing where this is actually going to go. Um, Mercedes talks to Rachel, tells her she's happy about the whole, um, you know, she's happy Rachel gave her advice on the sex thing. And, um, Rachel tells her that, you know, Rachel says, you know, she's happy that she told her. But Mercedes says, when are you going to find a relationship? And, and Rachel says, you know, her and Sam had something before but she didn't really like Sam. I like that they kind of had continuity with that. Um, I, I like that they did that. Um, because people always say Glee never has continuity. And they had continuity right there. So I was happy that they did that. And basically she tells Mercedes that she didn't love Sam. She, you know, Sam was basically Finn's best friend. So she kind of was just close to Sam in that way. And now she's over him. But Mercedes tells her that. You know, she's in Funny Girls. She's about to uh, be on opening night. That's the next episode, by the way. It's going to be Rachel's opening night on Funny Girl, which I'll get to. Um, and why doesn't she try to find love? And Rachel says she doesn't know who she wants, but, you know, she does want eventually uh, to eventually have a relationship. And Mercedes says, well, you should try to. And uh, Rachel says she might try. So I don't know where that's going to go, but I guess uh, we'll just have to see. But this was a fantastic episode. This was actually a really good episode. I really liked it. Was it as good as the past two episodes? No. It was probably just... It was a standard, really good episode of Glee. It was still a really good episode. I, I really enjoyed the way, you know, certain plots worked out. Next week is going to be Rachel's opening night in Funny Girl. It's going to be a really big episode. Definitely, I'm really looking forward to next week's episode. I think it's going to be really big. Because especially, um, is, is Karma going to come back to for a Rachel with quitting Neata is, is that karma going to come back to, you know, bite her in the, bite her in the back, and bite her in the ass, basically. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I feel like some people didn't really like this episode, and I feel like that's kind of just like, this was a, as I said, was a standard episode. There wasn't, like, anything big happening. Um, my only question is, will we see this Julie girl again? Will, will we see her again? Will Artie try to repair his relationship with her um, is Rachel gonna find someone, like Mercedes said, is, is that gonna happen? Will Mercedes and Sam eventually have sex? I'm wondering if they are gonna get married. I, I was wondering in that scene if Sam was gonna propose to her or something, but, you know, he didn't. Um, basically, though, this episode was really good, and I hope you enjoyed this review. Also, what do you think of the current blame plot? I thought that was really well done. That's it for my review, though. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for the season premiere of Awkward, which I actually know the originals, and then the season premiere of Awkward, which I can't wait for. So I'll see you guys for that. Bye!